Okay, um, so that's our uh, kind of introduction, and now we're going to talk about uh, the basics of data trees by defining our own data structure. And this might be a little bit of a review, but we're going to get the juices flowing, and we'll go through this quickly uh, by developing our own data structure through the context of points. I should also say that the way we've structured the files um, for today, each file is a particular exercise, but it also is also working through a particular geometry type. So we can, as closely as possible within the context of this course, talk about applications and when you might need to do a very particular thing, because that's really what advanced data trees and the art of uh, manipulating them is all about, right? Is how we can make our creative projects um, actually uh, come to fruition. All right, so the first exercise is gonna be related to points, and just as a, uh, again, a recap on points as an element within the uh, ladder of um, computational geometry. They are represented by an ordered set of numbers called coordinates. Typically this is done in our standard X, Y, Z space or Cartesian space. Right? They're basic geometrical elements. We use them very frequently for generating more complex types. Uh, we can also gather points from more complex types such as curves or surfaces. And always points will reside within a specific coordinate system. We'll call that a space, right? a local space uh, XYZ space, etc. And typically that space is the world or XYZ coordinate system. Right? So if we have a point here on a particular plane, right? um, let's see, in this particular coordinate system, we might find a point at 3, 2 relative to that particular plane. Um, also, we could define a point based on where it exists in the world. So if we have a point at 5, 7, 6, um, we might be able to create a diagram such as this to help uh, unpack what that means for the point and where it resides in the X, Y, Z, or world space. Okay, so also uh, we're going to have to briefly talk about lists because um, lists come before data trees uh, as we talk about how different um, bits of data are organized within um, uh, data trees, so uh, sorry, within Grasshopper. So a list is just a particular data structure that has an ordered set of elements where each one is labeled with an index value, and that particular item is then um, stored in a order, right? Um, five comes before six, etc. Right? And when we're working with lists, um, very quickly within Grasshopper, you're going to find that you have to deal with data matching, right? And this has to do with when we're working with a list of five elements and trying to use it in conjunction with a list of, let's say, seven elements, right? So what happens within that context? Well, let's say we have stream A has three points and stream B has five points. If we're talking about the shortest, longest, or cross-reference data matching algorithms, these are uh, the diagrams that would correspond with those particular uh, assignments, right? Uh, shortest list ends at the shortest list. Longest list carries forth until all connections are made uh, between the two lists and then cross-references all the possible connections. Now, what does that mean um, or what kind of um, other options do we have in terms of coordinating how our elements within our uh, parametric file are connected or related to each other? Well, that data matching uh, alone gives us some uh, options, but working with data trees actually gives us many more possibilities in terms of what we match up with what and then what is the desired result, right? So here's a representation, um, a graphical one of a data tree. And the, um, the nice thing about data trees is that um, at the end of every branch or path, those two terms will be used generally, um, uh, they're generally exchangeable, those two terms. If we look at the end of each branch, uh, we'll see that we can have variable numbers of elements that are stored at that branch. Right? And that's not a problem for data trees. It's okay if we have nine on one, well, on one path and six on another. Right? That means that we can then coordinate, let's say, what happens when we relate all the elements within this data path, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, to the ones all the way over here, or all the ones that actually are below that one level within the data structure. 
Okay, so where do data trees and this terminology come from, right? What, what's the kind of background for them? Well, data trees are uh, within the umbrella of data structures called uh, tries and T-R-I-E, or kind of tree or try are the uh, two ways to pronounce this. And well, I'll, I'll say try just to keep it uh, different from data tree. But a try is an ordered data structure in which elements are stored and accessed by a key. Right, so just like lists, it's ordered. Um, it allows us to store things, but the difference here is that we get a unique key that helps us understand uh, what, where that thing is within um, the memory of the computer. So if we um, break down what a try might be, right? If we had a uh, collection of letters and we're adding letters to the previous letter in each level that our try grows, we can go from uh, a blank space to T, to TE, to TEN, and that will get us to 10, right? So if we follow the path uh, that is described by T, E, and N, we'll get to 10, right? That allows us to, from the start of our uh, data structure, find the current uh, collection of elements um, at a particular level within the data structure. Now, if we were to change uh, one of those moves and st instead follow D, right, we get to a different location, which is TED. And notice that each one of these is a unique uh, key, right? If I want to get to here, I have to say T. If I want to get to here, I have to say I N. Right? That helps keep things uh, separate so that we can work with them um, very specifically and easily. Well, what if we were to go out of the realm of language would that mean relative to Grasshopper? Right? If we have an abstract version of this diagram of a try here, if we replace all of those letters with numbers, right, we're very close to seeing something that looks like a data tree as we were describing it earlier. Right? Instead of going from the start uh, through T, E, and N, we're going to follow 0, 1, 2. That gets me to 0, 1, 2. That's all of the things that are stored here. I can also go back a level to find all the things that are stored at 0, 1, et cetera. So the, the try or data tree is really convenient, um, conveniently ordered so that we can both move through the paths relative to um, the actions that we're uh, assigning these uh, letters to, or we can actually move across, right? It's pretty easy to go from 0, 1 to 0, 0. There's just a small difference between the second value here. Okay, so data trees come from Grasshopper. Um, they were first in Grasshopper version 6. We're at 9.14 now. Um, so they've been around for a little while. Uh, but um, their kind of full extents, I think, are still, their uh, potential is still uh, waiting for uh, all of the users of Grasshopper to really be able to take advantage of uh, the possibilities with data trees. And that's part of the reason why we uh, produce this course for you. Um, so if we talk about data trees uh, relative to lists, right, um, in a data structure that is defined as a data tree, all of our data, our bits of information, are stored in lists. But each list now has a path, right? And paths are a series of indices describing the position of the data branch inside the tree, right? So we're back to here. We have these paths that allow us to access the list of elements at the end of each one of those paths. This is also a, um, each one of these segments is a branch, right? And then everything is ordered still relative to the paths, and it's ordered relative to the lists. So uh, we have a very clear organizational scheme that we can use within Grasshopper. So when we're in Grasshopper, um, we're going to be using the uh, param viewer as a way to uh, visualize these trees, these data trees, and this will be in comparison to uh, what we've produced as a set of static diagrams that we can review uh, graphically in the presentations. All right, so we broke down the data tree taxonomy. Um, let's go ahead and get started uh, with the first exercise, and then we'll come back to um, the presentation uh, whenever we um, run into our first um, challenge within the exercise. So go ahead and launch Rhino. I'm using Rhino 5 64-bit.
All right, and uh, Rhino's opening up, and I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, Grasshopper into the command line. To launch the plugin for Grasshopper, you should be working with build 9.14. Um, that's where all the, uh, that's all the files that we've um, created for you as references. They're all um, based on that format. So if it, you have anything below that, uh, I think you're going to get some errors.